All right, let's take a look at the Helix 10 side imaging. This is the new unit that I will be running this year. And some of the things that come in the box and some of the new stuff. So what do we have? We got the big side imaging transducer, which is the same one they used on all the old, older legacy models like the 1100s and the 900s. Um, power cable. We're going to use that. We got a heading sensor. And then the unit itself, and the biggest thing that I notice right off the bat is the cover itself is, get this out of the way, the cover itself is different. So it's a little more stable, won't fly off in the wind, and it's, it's quite a bit heavier, and it's flexible. Transducer, which we're gonna all, we're gonna hook this up in, in the house here just to show you how it works and how I like to set it. So the actual GPS module I'm using is the uh, heading sensor model, which is very very accurate. So it tells you which way the boat is turning at all times. Um, that's the preferred one. So let me get this hooked up and uh, we'll show you show you the initial startup. First thing I notice on the back of the unit is everything is just kind of the same as the old, the old standard 1100s, 900s, uh, same hookups in the back here. So if you're replacing your older unit with a new helix, uh, the, the cables are the same, so you won't have to change that out. Uh, transducers, all that's going to be the same hookup. So plug in the power cable, GPS sensor, and transducer. And that's that. And initial power up. Go into my menu, go into normal startup options, exit out of there. And the first thing I notice right off the bat is how bright this unit is. Um, I run my chart orientation on head up, so I'm always traveling up the screen rather than down or sideways. Casting rings is something I use a lot of. Um, what that does is it gives you a circle around around your boat on the screen so you know how far away your waypoints are. I usually set it at 60 feet. That way if I pull up to a waypoint I want to cast to it. Um, 60 feet is a good number. I know exactly how far away I am from that waypoint. Hummingbird chart. This is where you adjust your depth highlights. Auto chart live is really easy. I can just record by turning it on. That'll record a, a map for me without doing anything else. It's super easy. There. This area here is the RTS window in real time sonar. I shut that off. I don't need that. So I go into my main menu into my sonar tab. And down here you'll see RTS window. It's real time sonar. Uh, I shut that off. Temperature graph, I turn that on. I want to see temperature lines, so if it all of a sudden gets warmer water, my temperature line goes up. And that's about it. So now you can see my real-time sonar is off. I get a bigger picture. Side imaging color. Um, I go into my menu. I want my active side on the left, which it already is. Side imaging side, I'm looking both ways. Sensitivity is at 10. Side imaging range. That's a good question. Side imaging range. I always, if I'm just starting out in normal depth, you know, let's say anything less than 30 feet, um, I'm usually set about 75 to 90 feet, somewhere in there. So that's a good area to start looking. And then also my side imaging colors. For me, blue has always been my best, so I set it to palette color number one. Okay. Everything looks good. So first impression's awesome. Really bright screen. Can easily see it from the side angles and you know, everything is good that way. It's no problem seeing it. So really looking forward to this unit. Um, I really like it. So 
we get this thing mounted on the boat and on the water, we'll give you some more demos.